Hello students, we have already studied the structure of flower. Now we are going to study the process of fertilization in flowers. Okay, so what is fertilization? Fertilization is the fusion of the male and female nuclei. The male and female nuclei, they combine together and give rise to the zygote and that process is known as fertilization. Now what is the male gamete in flowering plants? It is the pollen grain and the female gamete is the ovule. Now we shall study the structure of the pollen grain and the ovule. Okay. Now pollen grain is a small round structure which falls on the stigma of the another plant or of the same plant by the process of pollination. And when it falls on the stigma of one uh, plant, a flower, then it has got a two nucleus stage. That means we will just look at the structure of the pollen grain. Just see here. This is uh, figure A. It has got uh, pollen grain. Now this pollen grain has got two layered structure. The outer layer is the exine which is the rough surface which is somewhat rough as you can see and the inner one is intine which is quite smooth. This is the smooth one is the intine. Now in the exine there are certain spaces left. These are this this there is a breakage in the exine. These are known as germ pores. You can see here also what two, three or even more germ pores are present in each pollen grain. These germ pores, what, what is their function? At the time of this uh, formation of pollen tube, the intine grows from here. So germ pore helps in the development of pollen tube. Now, there is a sim single nucleus in this first uh, diagram. Now let us move on to E. Here you can see there is a tube nucleus being formed. I will use a different color. There is a tube nucleus being formed and then another cell has formed out of the main pollen grain that is the generative cell and it has also got one nuclei that is the generative nuclei. Now this is a two cell stage of the pollen grain and it is at this two cell stage is this it is known as two cell stage okay and at it is at this two cell stage that this pollen grain is going to fall on the stigma of the flower and when then when, when it will fall there then it will germinate okay by the process of it is going to fall there by the process of pollination okay and then it will germinate on receiving on having the conducive conditions like proper moisture is there, nourishment is provided to it, suitable temperature is there, then it will germinate and a pollen tube will grow out of the pollen grain through those germ pores. So here you can see there uh, this tube nucleus in generative nucleus. So this is a two celled or two nuclei stage. There are two cells and two nuclei. Now uh, let us study something more like in this D stage as you can see when this pollen grain has already fallen onto the stigma the pollen tube is germinating the pollen tube has grown out okay so now there is a single again still at this stage there is a single generative nucleus and a tube nucleus actually the function of the tube nucleus is just it is the guiding light of the pollen tube like it is just guiding the pollen tube through the style style is a solid tissue so it is guiding the pollen tube through the style and into the ovule all right what what happens when this pollen tube is growing this generative nucleus divides into two two nuclei two nuclei are formed you can see here these are the two male cells so it has divided into two nuclei so now it is a three celled stage okay earlier it was two celled now it is a three celled stage now but this thing this process is taking place within the style of the female uh, part of the flower gynosium all right so we know that pollen is a double layer structure outer layer is the exine inner layer is the intine then a uh, uh, it has got two cell stage. One is the tube cell, the tube nucleus, and the other is the generative cell containing generative nuclei. It is that two cell stage that this pollen grain falls on the style, sorry, on the stigma, and then it starts germinating as it receives uh, favorable conditions. Now let us study the structure of ovule. Now what is ovule? 
you've studied the basic structure of flower this is the stigma the upper portion this whole portion is the stigma then this tube is the style and the basal swollen part is the ovary the ovary contains another uh, oval structure which is known as ovule now ovule has got certain uh, cells inside it it has got seven cells as you can see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this entire central thing is one cell so this is known as a seven cell stage 3 plus 3 plus 1 3 plus 3 plus 1 so this is a seven cell seven seven cell stage but it has got eight nuclei the cent the central cell has got two nuclei okay and these are known as the polar nuclei as you can see here these are known as the polar it is already written there but still i am writing it is known the, these are known as the polar nuclei these three cells which are at the top of the ovule they are known as the antipodal cells okay these are the antipodal nuclei the three cells at the base of the gametophyte they are the the two cells at the periphery of the main egg cell this is the central cell egg cell and the two cells at its periphery they are the synergids okay they are the protective cells and ultimately they are going to all of them going are going to help in the fertilization and development of embryo by providing nutrition now uh, this uh, whole thing this ovule is a two layered structure it has got two layers uh, which are known as integuments okay these covering layers of ovule are known as integuments now this is this whole thing is female gametophyte or the embryo sac okay it has got how many nuclei eight nuclei and seven cells now it is at this stage that it is going to be fertilized now what happens the ovule the pollen tube is entering the, this is the microbial through which the pollen tube is going to enter now what is fertilization the fusion the fusion of the male nuclei with the female nuclei now as a result of favorable conditions this germinating pollen tube uh, i'm just going to show it with a different color okay this is the pollen grain and it is uh, it has uh, got favorable conditions so it has germinated now this pollen tube is going through the style like this and it is ultimately entering the ovary through the micropyle okay now what happens after this as uh, i told you earlier the tube nucleus it is only the guiding light of the two male nuclei so as this enters the ovule the tube nucleus degenerates because it has uh, accomplished its task its function is over so it degenerates now what happens the this thing degenerates the two male nuclei one of them combines with this central cell egg cell one male nucleus combines with the egg cell and the and it forms the zygote zygote is being formed the other male nucleus which was here it goes and combines with these two polar nuclei okay one has combined with this and it has formed the zygote this one here goes and combines with these two the as you can see in this diagram and it forms the endosperm so this is one fertilization where the egg cell is combining with one of the male cells and result in the formation of zygote this is first fertilization okay there's one fertilization here it is done now sorry i'll write it here this is the first fertilization the combination of the male cell male nuclei with the female egg cell okay this is first fertilization now when this male gamete combines with the two polar nuclei this is the second fertilization which is also taking place in the same ovule it is the same ovule in which these two fusion these two uh, fertilization are taking place so this process is known as double fertilization and the fusion of the two polar nuclei with the male nucleus this process is known as triple fusion because there are two nuclei which are fusing together 
to form the endosperm. So this process is known as triple fusion. Ultimate aim of this endosperm is to provide nutrition to the developing embryo. The zygote develops into embryo, and this whole these all these cells they disintegrate to provide nutrition to the developing embryo. Now this is the process of fertilization. Now what happens to the various parts of the flower as a result of fertilization? We'll just see end results of fertilization. What are they? The zygote which has formed develops into the embryo. Okay, the zygote develops into the embryo. The ovule develops into the seed, and the ovary, the surrounding container in which everything is taking place, it develops into the fruit. Uh, the other parts of the flower like petals, sepals, stamens, style, and stigma they simply dry off and shrivel and fall down. Means they have no further role. They have already done the whatever uh, whatever role was assigned to them by nature. Now it's they are no they are of no use to the plant, so they fall off. Sometimes, but in some plants, sometimes the calyx, that is the sepals, they remain. Calyx means the sepals. They remain persistent and they don't fall off. Means the calyx is persistent. Such things are seen. Such uh, phenomena, such a phenomena is seen in. Tomato, brinjal. You see, in the brinjal, it has got that cap. That is the remaining calyx. The brinjal is like this. It has got these three structures. So this is the calyx. This part is the calyx. This is the calyx, persistent calyx, which remains there on the top of the brinjal. So in tomato, also you can see that top, or in some other plants also. So that is known as persistent calyx. Otherwise, every other these petals, sepals, stem and style, they all shrivel up and they fall down. Fall down. They are useless to the flower. So this was fertilization. Now in our next video, we are going to study about the male reproductive system. That is, we are going to start the reproductive rep reproductive uh, process reproduction in human beings. And we are going to study about the first the male reproductive system, then the female reproductive reproductive system, and then the fertilization. Okay. So till then. Thank you.